In this After Effects quick tip, I'm going to go over animation paths, which is called interpolation. There's a couple of settings that can make your life a lot easier, and some of these are tricking up some people. So let's dive right in and get it all cleared up. Okay, so I'm here in After Effects now, and um, I'm going to start off by just making a couple of keyframes. What I want this to do is just, I'm actually going to use these controls so you can see that I'm trying to drag straight. I want this to move in sort of just a linear to the right and then down linearly. But you can see what's happening here is that I'm getting this curved path. And if you were to grab one of these points, you actually have controls. And this is a Bezier path, meaning that um, this allows you to give a little bit more movement to your path without adding extra keyframes along the way. And sometimes this is helpful, but if you're trying to do what I was trying to do, um, it's a real pain. So the easiest way, um, if you go into your preferences under general, there's this thing right here, default spatial interpolation to linear. For some reason, the default, this is not checked when you start up After Effects. I like to, to set it um, so that if I go now and I do that, Now, actually, I might have had to reset or create a new one. So this is actually going to be a good uh, point for me to show you. Um, and let's, let's make a new solid. And I'm just going to go like that to make it easy. So now if I do this real quick and I drag it over, now it's moving how I want it in a perfectly linear fashion. So if you didn't want to do that though, and you already had some movement on it, like I do in this example. Here's another example where I've already set some keyframes, and basically it's just going to move in this sort of X fashion. But as you can see, it's kind of running over. I turn on this echo effect so you could help see it, but maybe that's not necessary. If you look at the path, you can see it's not straight. So what you do in this case is you select your keyframes and you right click on them here in the timeline and then up here four, four menus up is keyframe interpolation and that's exactly what we were looking at in the preferences setting and this brings up temporal interpolation and spatial interpolation. Temporal would be the timing in the timeline so if you're easing in and out we're talking about spatial interpolation here which is how it's going to move in space. So right now it is set to auto bezier. And you can see that there's actually three different beziers. Um, to be quite honest, I'm not sure the difference between these three. I basically understand this as there's linear or bezier. Um, and the other, these two kind of don't matter to me. So all you would do here is go to linear and do that. And look, now that changed to a perfectly, now it's moving right. Let's say you wanted to change that, um, but uh, perhaps you only want to change just one point of it. You want all the rest to be linear. Um, if you go up to the pen tool here and hold it down, there's the convert vertex tool. And if you've used uh, Illustrator on paths, you might, this might look familiar, but if you use that and click, hold down, and drag you can drag out the Bezier path now. You could also go in here and click those ones. Now because I had all those selected in the time frame or timeline, it changed all those. But if I didn't have any selected and I just had the layer, I can do that to just certain ones. So now it'll round around here and then go straight on those ones. You could also do that there. Um, with I should make another video about the Be um, this Bezier paths and this tool, but if you can break this now so that you can have it curve in. You know, curve in, but then go straight across. So my preference is to start with a linear interpolation path and then go in and use the pen convert vertex tool to dial in your path more particularly. Um, I think this is the easiest way 
And, you know, um, another situation is when you want to add, say, a drift. So let's say I'm going to just go back to this one here and I'm going to delete that keyframe. So right now we just have it going here. Now sometimes you like to add a little drift. So what I'll do is just put a new keyframe right there and then I'll drag that way out so that it just kind of drifts slowly. A lot of times this is what people want. You know, they never want something static. So how do you kind of get that little drift to keep going? Well, if you had this all set up as um, Bezier paths, and I'll go ahead and do this keyframe interpolation. Watch what happens here now. It goes forward. Of course, this is not going to... Sometimes what happens when you have the uh, interpolation defaulting to the uh, Bezier path one and not to linear, you get this overshoot here where this will actually end up going a little bit right. And then it, it'll come back before then moving all the way to this keyframe. Now, I, I added those two to kind of help illustrate my point, but... Um, you know, if, if you've been using After Effects a little bit with any sort of paths, I'm sure this has been a frustration and uh, isn't new. So um, my preference is just to check that always. And anytime I see that it's defaulting to that Bezier path, I like to just go ahead and, uh, you know, take care of it and um, just not even have to worry about it. Set it in the preferences and then you're all good. So same thing here. If you did have it, you could use that tool again to, um, you know, we said before when I had all the keyframes selected that you could go in and um, hit them all and they would all convert. Now I can go hit ahead and just click one also and individually change them. So it's kind of like a toggle. You can toggle them in and out if you keep on clicking. All right, uh, I think that should pretty much sum it up. Let me know if you enjoyed this. If this was helpful, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I think um, I should probably do another tutorial on Bezier paths. Um, it's sort of the same for animation paths, strokes in Illustrator, strokes in the pen tool and After Effects. And um, it's just an invaluable thing to know. You know. It, It'll really help your workflow when you start to understand those tools. So thanks so much for watching, and uh, hope to catch you again next time.